Hello folks, I wanted to take a look at some of the themes in Isaac Asimov's Foundation series for a long time and I thought I'd just jump in and uh, have a go at it because I think that the books have got a lot to say about history and the way history flows and how in Western civilization we've ended up in the state that we are now or at least it can raise some interesting questions on that subject. It's uh, three, well, it's a lot of science fiction books. For, for this video, I'm just going to concentrate on two, the first two, and you'll get the basic uh, set up, the basic gist of it. And Isaac Asimov uh, is a well known science fiction writer, of course. He's a Jewish gentleman, and his politics and worldview are what you, well, he was influential in the humanist movement, and you could say there were classic liberal. Um, enlightenment, something like Richard Dawkins or Stephen Pinker today. And Foundation takes place thousands of years in the future. And it's a, it's actually a huge saga and I'm going to try and just keep to the, the main ideas of the the books um, for this video. And he's, Asimov, based it largely on fall and decline of the Roman Empire after he read Edward Gibbon. And it's a, a space empire, and it's, it's so thousands of years in the future, and this space empire sprawls the galaxy. But what I what fascinates me about Foundation when I first read the books ten or fifteen years ago was that I was left a little bit uncomfortable with it because what Foundation is based upon is implementing what I would think of as a system of control for humanist or liberal um, values and it, instead of it being with Edward Gibbon's fall and decline of the Roman Empire foundation is a way to cheat that uh, Spenglerian historical cycle of, of rise and, and fall and what foundation sets out is a way to carry on uh, a, a sort of civilization without it ever with with it being controlled at a macro level and that's what left me a little bit uncomfortable about the book and so if we just get into it then it's really set on a planet called Tranto which is the capital of the, the empire and a man called Harry Selden has found a way to predict the future. But this is science, materialism, empiricism. There's no magic or hocus pocus here. It's all about being able to predict the future through mathematics and through science. And because the, he can is, is sort of crack the ability to do that, it means that he can predict that the empire itself is starting to collapse in on itself. For the people inside of the empire, they don't know any difference. It seems as mighty and as powerful as, as ever. But using what he calls psychohistory, he knows that the empire is actually going to collapse. And it's going to happen slowly. And it's going to be painful and protracted. And so Selden comes up with a plan to take the scientific knowledge and economic knowledge of the empire and then send it out to a far corner of the, the the galaxy and a planet called Terminus and then they would sort of reboot the empire and the cycle of chaos and misery would be reduced from 30,000 years to 1,000 years but the key here is that it's predicted it, it's a plan and a clear project which is being laid out and on top of that the people the citizens will not be aware of that they're living inside of this plan or this project. And so that is essentially what Foundation gets into and that um, they can sort of preempt and foresee problems which are going to arise. And I think it's interesting because we can have a look around the world around us today and ask ourselves, is something like that playing out? Are we living, is it the, the free will? Or is it a clear plan which was laid out a long time ago? If so, how long ago? 
Because what baffled me when I read Foundation was that it was taken for granted that centralising power over the entire galaxy, essentially annexing all humans into a galactic-wide sort of European Union, was automatically morally just. And by default, the best way for humanity to organise itself. And I disagreed with that premise. But we'll get into that as, uh, as I go through this. So let's take a look at what psychohistory actually is. In psychohistory, you can predict large-scale uh, macro events, but you cannot go down to the, the human, the individual. You can't, you can't predict, for example, that a president is going to drop dead of a heart attack, but you can predict that over time, one country has enough resources that it will become more powerful than another country, or planet in this case, and that it will then start to force itself on and, and throw its weight around over these other areas, these other people and these other, other planets. And so it's large-scale macro trends which can be predicted. And throughout Foundation, Harry Seldon comes back, he keeps coming back in a... a as a sort of hologram and each time he pops up he's right about where they should what problems they should be dealing with now and where in the the grand plan they are because foundations been handed the best science and economic systems that the galaxy has to offer through the empire secretly then it gives it an edge because it is at the edge of the, the galaxy, but it does have an edge of them over them, the regional power centers and rival planets because it has psycho history and it has the very best science and economics which the Empire could provide it with. And so over time, what, what, they, are, what they get away with is manipulating the planets around them and increasing their share of power and expanding back across the galaxy but the people with living within them aren't actually directly aware that the project is even happening in the first place to them these are just a set of historical events playing out that's not part of a grand project or some sort of grand scheme to manipulate the course of history and this so then we can look at back at earth and you look back across earth and you have to ask yourself if events um wars economic crashes and such like were they planned out were, were is that is history being channeled in a certain direction by certain forces or is this just the result of individual human beings with agency well in foundation the people would think that the, they are that history is the culmination of their own individual wills because they don't know about psychohistory and they don't know that the foundation project even exists and this raises a lot of questions especially when we get back to earth because a, a, a globalist today will think that they definitely think in terms of there being a plan even if it isn't as explicit as some in the inner circles do but to the general population, the world they see around them is the result of the ebb and flow of history and of um, people acting in accordance to their own free will. It's the, the sum total of it. Whereas what Isaac Asimov passes off in foundation is that it should be manipulated and the people shouldn't know about it and that this is morally good. And some people will look back at uh, Asimov's background here and begin to ask some questions, especially when we, we take into consideration the, the driving force of foundation, apart from psychohistory, is very, very materialistic. Populations will be allowed scientific uh, experiments, they'll be allowed scientific knowledge and the economics, they'll be rich but the, if there's any form of spiritual life, then that will be preempted and debunked and sort of left by the wayside. If there's any power centers who disagree, then they will be slowly absorbed into the, the foundation, so reboot of an empire. 
because um, they've got they've got the moral imperative to do that. They see it as a morally just thing to do. But when I read it, going back 10, 15 years, it, it to me it took away all mystery and all wonder about the universe because you could climb a mountain on some distant planet but you would still just be part of this controlled bureaucratic system which is basically what it is there's nothing no wonder mystery left um everything has been pre-planned and when we look at the world today you can see this being reflected and so that you begin another thing is that people inside of the foundation project they don't just know even if they began to have some suspicions they wouldn't know how old it is how far back does it go and in the same way sort of dissident um, minds in today's world ask themselves well how old is this globalist new world order project how long has it been going on for? Where? How far back do we have to go? And in the case of this this video and foundation, I think it, you could go back to the Enlightenment. And it's very strange how similar the the Enlightenment ideals are to Asimov's humanist ideals, which have informed the foundation world. Because the Enlightenment is founded on such things as, as free will and, and empiricism, um, rationalism, but so too is foundation. So then you have to ask the question of whether or not the people are aware that they are being manipulated if it was just a grand plan. Was it? Because you would look at it in exactly the same way as the people who are trapped within foundation. Well, they're not really trapped because, like the, like the people wandering around in the European Union today or the Western world today, um, they think they're free. But they're not free to change the course of history. They don't even know that it's being manipulated in the first place. It is interesting to point out, though, that in, in planet Earth, the globalists, no matter how powerful, do not, as far as we know have a scientific method to predict the future. So then we have to ask, well, how is it that it perpetuates itself? How is it that somebody else's vision of how the world should be keeps being implemented decade after decade, or, as I'm implying here, for centuries, and even though individuals come and go? Individuals die, individuals gain power, individuals implement the plan, and then they die away again. And there's never really any sense that this is going to grind to a halt it just keeps on going no matter how many people die no matter how many wars no matter how many people are unhappy no matter how many votes are thrown against it the world heads in a certain direction regardless and the people know where they are going they know what they want and they they don't have psycho history and in the end you're going to have to accept that it's people who are operating according to some sort of millenarian mission which is beyond themselves as individuals and that they're attached to something more um, they're attached to a, a, a vision a religious vision which is higher than individuals of that group and so they, they then get the chance to implement the the sort of world view that people live in such as uh, scientific materialism and not making money basically uh, materialism as the highest ideal and then on top of that they get to they can then take a step back and see how that has to be how that has to be done and they've always got this vision and they can use that as a guide going into the future rather than being able to predict the future itself so Henry Kissinger will retire and die and somebody will uh, take his place. George Soros will eventually die and somebody else will take his place. But as long as, long as things remain within a certain paradigm, then they're, they're okay, then they get it. An interesting one here would be to look at, say, communism and the Bolshevik Revolution. And is that then, was that truly revolutionary? And I would argue probably not. 
not in any deep sense because it was still based purely on materialism. Socialism is just based purely on materialism. It's just about wanting to have more money. It's still operating within that paradigm. And so, and of course, when you dig into it a little bit, you realize that the, the Bolshevik Revolution was funded by the money power. And so, the, even though it was a bloodbath, and even though it was a horror show, and it looked like relative to normal life in the West, it looked like something awful and beyond the pale, it was still operating within a certain ontological perspective, no matter how bloody it was. But then we can question capitalism itself, which is in the West seen as being naturally good. Is it? Well, <laughs> I had to think so, actually. But it doesn't matter. The point is that you're, each of these extremes are operating within a certain paradigm, which the architects have laid down. And in that way, you can preempt um, and create controlled opposition to the main project itself. It's just different extremes operating within the same system. But what happens when that breaks down? Can it break down entirely? Well, then you see that the all of the system will turn on something to snuff it out. Because there'll be some areas where they just cannot, cannot uh, risk having that catch on at all. And I would say National Socialism in Germany and much of German philosophy is an example of it. It, had, it was an existential threat and had to be snuffed out entirely. As certain forms of Islam uh, in, in the Middle East seem to be uh, very undesirable according to this project as it stands on earth how does how does that play out in foundation then well in book two asimov introduces the real problem and it's the problem that you have when so we've got psycho history we've got the project going along foundation is expanding and the new empire is well on its way but then because it's the three main books and in the second chapter you, the second part of the story is usually when it all goes to hell. And in the second foundation book, Asimov introduces the mule. And the mule is where it all goes to hell. Because what ha the mule is a mutant and he has the ability to manipulate the minds of the masses. Again, you can see. Uh, th and so this is what they fear. This is what they fear most of all, because now the Seldom Plan and Foundation weren't in control anymore. What you had was a sort of overman, in a Nietzschean sense, who, who, who had the ability to control the minds of the masses and break them away. And Foundation pretty much collapses until it's saved by a religious sect, um, which is the second Foundation, but I will leave that for another time. In The Mule... And the masses revolt against the foundation, and you can. What interests me is that this this is their fear, and of course on on Earth this is the populist. Well, you could argue whether or not uh, Donald Trump um, scared the system in this way. I think he actually did. I think uh, Adolf Hitler is definitely a mule character. I think when Joseph Stalin took over the the Soviet Union. Um, and sort of abolished the common turn. There's there is an argument to be had that he too is a mule. So from time to time, history throws up characters um, which do seem to threaten the 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 pro the grander project, this messianic, millenarian project, um, if it exists. But it's certainly a way to look at the world. But they don't want you to look at the world that way either. These, this is the forbidden fruit that you can't touch, especially in the case of National Socialism in Germany. So in that, they, they are aware of it. They are aware of what the problems are, and it's somebody who has the ability to book the trend and, and manipulate the minds of the masses according to his own will and not the will of the foundation. So the foundation project is classically liberal 
but it's conscious of itself and it's not supposed to be. The the classic liberal ideals are supposed to be where the there is no masses, it's just a mass of um, self-actualized people with agency and the culminative effect of their will is how what shapes society. Foundation is liberal in their day-to-day -day lives. They live a liberal life. But it peels away the scab and it shows you that actually it, it's it's been planned out all along. So how can we look for clues that that is the case in the real world? One way to do that is to see where the, the values contradict themselves. So, for example, it, the Brexit vote would be a black swan event where the system was, the trend was booked and the masses voted against the larger plan, which was obviously more and more centralised control. And so this is a system that lords democracy uh, is a ver as its absolute core value, and yet you can see straight away that it just overrides it, and it's looking for ways to quash the will of the voters. But in order to do that, it has to be able to argue that morally, which is why, to be honest, the Brexit vote is is what the drama surrounding it's just a big mess. But on another one, it would be scientific, um, the scientific method is another liberal core value and yet here again we see because it didn't fit the narrative of globalizing humanity that too was shelved because it didn't fit in with an open borders world um, and one big human blob and so again and again you see that they will contradict their own values in order to push forward the the agenda and religion is another problem Religion is a problem where people will have ideals and a spiritual life which doesn't accord with the values of the liberal system. And once again, we can see that since the Enlightenment, um, especially well in the West anyway, that the religion just was, was strangled away, was, was, was killed off really by the Enlightenment. And so what you were left with was the individual and in theory you know they did like these ideas of, uh, of Prometheus P people like uh, Shelley the, the because normally we talk about political thinkers but then you had people like Shelley and it was a Prometheus stealing signs from the gods and handing it to humanity but in actual fact from the perspective of foundation humanity is just a big blob to be manipulated the actualized individual wasn't capable of doing anything at all. And even the, the antagonist, as in the mule, is somebody who has to sway the minds of the masses in one direction or another. But the conceit is to think that the highest achievable goal is the individual. That is actually, that's what the system wants because then, like the, the, the sort of Promethean man, they become gods to themselves and the idea that they're being manipulated for somebody else's ends, that they are actually being controlled, it's, it's, a, it's a conceit, it's the lie. But because they believe they're free, it makes it really difficult to tell them that they're not. And so the culmination of the society, they will argue, is because we arrived at this through rational means, through the scientific method. And yet, as, we, as I just explained, that will be shelved when it's convenient for the system. So the question then is, what do you do about it? And uh, the mule was also a black swan event. A black swan event is where a system of control has to deal with something which it doesn't want to. It's the spanner in the works. Down, and so you're gonna you, we glide from a situation where people are just unaware of the system of control, which is the desired option from the perspective of the architects, to one where people are just oppressed. And the people are then looking for ways to get rid of the people who are oppressing them. And this is where, this is 
where we get into some dangerous territory. But the internet itself is the problem, and we can see now that they're clamping down on the internet all over the place. And once again, we can see that this pretense of the individual having freedom in the West and the Democrats, it's a complete sham. And we peel back the scar, the scab and take a look at it. But where are they going to go with it? Well, at the end of the day, you are powerless. Um, we are powerless to do anything about it. And it's why I get more, I'm becoming more and more interested in the religious aspects. Because we can see in particular that the Catholic Church, however they started, you look back at the history of it. And I think the Catholic Church was fought a long war against, let's just say, the foundation on earth. Um, and ended up losing as well. And whether there's any life in that, whether that can be brought back, when, when that's a whole different um, argument, a different thing to take a look at. The point here is that I think the worst thing they can have to deal with is a, a, a spiritualism or something which transcends everything they have to offer, which is why I'm constantly launching broadsides against classic liberalism because I see it and the, the, the lies within it and the way it contorts and distorts history to suit it to a narrative as being the major problem. And foundation offers a fascinating insight into where you do actually have a, a tyranny of liberalism. But the, cl the key is that people aren't aware of it. And it, as I say, it even provides examples of the apple cart nearly getting upset, the joker in the pack. Okay, folks, I'll... Um I'll catch you later.